The following presentation by the Chestnut Hill Conservancy is part of our History at Home collection of activities from our archives. Community stories from our past in the comfort of your home. History at Home is made possible by our generous members and supporters. Thank you. This illustrated lecture, entitled The White City, was originally created as a captioned slideshow for the October 2019 Night of Lights exhibition along Germantown Avenue. The White City was developed by Stephanie Walsh, archivist at Springfield Township Historical Society, and produced by Leah Silverstein and Molly Murphy, with narration by Lori Salganikoff. Postcards and photographs of Chestnut Hill Amusement Park, White City, 1898 to 1911, from the Springfield Township Historical Society collection. The area known as Hydrickdale, near the Wheel Pump Inn, was purchased by Henry B. Aukey in 1897 to develop an amusement park. Henry B. Aukey, Charles E. Albright, Arnold Amon and John Faber Miller opened Chestnut Hill Park in the spring of 1898. Chestnut Hill Park was often referred to as White City due to the white paint used on all of the buildings. The Germantown Avenue trolley line of the Union Traction Company, later the Philadelphia Rapid Transit Company, was extended north along Hillcrest Avenue to the entrance to Chestnut Hill Park. The original dairy, water tank, and pump house of the Hydric Farm were kept and reused for Chestnut Hill Park operations. An artificial island sat in what was once Yakel's Pond on property that was purchased by Arnold Amon shortly after the Chestnut Hill Park first opened. The lake was a central design feature of Chestnut Hill Park. General admission to the park was free, however each attraction cost five cents including the five-minute dances couples could enjoy at the casino. Contrary to its name, the casino held no gambling halls, but rather rooms for dancing and a restaurant which served light lunches. A bandstand which hosted local brass bands was located on the island across from the casino. The bandstand had limited seating, as the goal of Chestnut Hill Park organizers was for visitors to be able to continue to move around the park, taking in the attractions while listening to the music. The carousel was one of the most popular rides at the park, the original being manufactured by E. Joy Morris. Horace Trumbauer, architect of White Marsh Hall, designed many buildings in Chestnut Hill Park, including the casino and the carousels building. The miniature railway was a calm ground level attraction for visitors uninterested in the newer thrill rides also offered at White City. Due to their popularity, a second carousel, toboggan, and miniature railway were constructed within Chestnut Hill Park. The second carousel was installed in 1906 by Aukey's Philadelphia Toboggan Company, consisting of three rings of animals, some of which would move up and down, appearing to jump. One attraction, the Woodland Arcade, contained three shaded picnic areas and Lover's Lane. The stone bridge over Wissahickon Creek at the end of the Woodland Arcade in Lover's Lane provided an overpass for Paper Mill Road. The boathouse offered visitors the opportunity to rent rowboats and spend time on the lake, perhaps taking in the music from the bandstand. 
One attraction at White City was the Whirlpool, seen here snaking through the landscape in the center of this postcard. Free or discounted ride tickets were distributed to lodges, Sunday schools, fraternities, and other organizations to entice them to bring their groups to Chestnut Hill Park for picnics. Theme days were organized to attract visitors to the park. Boater days were held, where men were expected to wear a straw hat or boater. North American Day was a theme day at the park promoted by the North American newspaper, offering reduced admission coupons once a year in its daily publication. The intent of Chestnut Hill Park was to provide summer entertainment for the working class population. Farmers Week was held every fall before the season closed and included games and exhibits important to the local agricultural community. Spectacle features such as the largest United States flag in the world, which White City boasted, were common at amusement parks around the country. The Philadelphia Rapid Transit Company, formerly the Union Traction Company, supplied power to White City by a substation outside of the main entrance. White City employed 120 people on a seasonal basis, all of whom received free meals and ride tickets as well as special entertainment on closing night at Chestnut Hill Park. A dress code of a jacket and tie for men and a dress and hat for women was instituted in an effort to encourage good behavior among the crowds in the park. Tintypes, while no longer the height of photographic technology during the White City's years of operation, remained well liked by park photographers as they could be quickly produced and handed to the visitor after purchase. Tintype portraits were a popular novelty for visitors, as they were small, durable, and inexpensive. After wealthy residents purchased the property over concerns the park was lowering property values in the area, Chestnut Hill Park, also known as the White City, closed in 1911.